Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Saura from Sandy Vaughn. Now this, so you're looking at that, at the, the, the title and you're thinking that's okay. Um, but let me just tell you a little bit about this. Uh, and, and it's extra special. So Today, at the time of this recording, it's Thursday, and Thursday means it's Tangle Time Day, uh, where I offer two sessions, and these are free online sessions that I've been uh, doing since, uh, uh, let's see, April 2020, and um, been having a ball, and uh, have had a lot of people um, join us, and I've gotten to know Sandy from Ireland and uh, it's been such a pleasure. And so let me just share what she wrote about this. Um, and so she helped with the pronunciation because it is, uh, Saura is, uh, it means summer or summertime in uh, her native Irish language. And then she says, my happy little seven-year-old granddaughter is named Summer. And she's tall, slender, and graceful, which I think this tangle is too. And it is. And so, uh, as Sandy said, she says, I'm dedicating this tangle to her. And Summer, I'm also dedicating this quickie video to you also. And because uh, she shared a picture with us on Facebook and, and, uh, and, and Summer, you're just, you're such a little doll. So enjoy. And, uh, and uh, I want to see, I want to see Summer's work. So Sandy, because I know you'll be watching, um, make sure you sh share if, uh, if Summer does this tangle. I want to see, we want to see it on the, the Facebook group. So. All right, without further ado, let's uh, let's get to this lovely tangle. All right. And, and, and thanks for indulging me because I, you know, I, it's, it's so fun to do tangles, but it's, I find it so much extra fun to like to premiere a tangle that, uh, you know, that somebody who now, I, you know, it's like we've developed these really nice friendships um, through Zentangle and through online, through all of this mess that we're in. And uh, it's 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 the only joy that has come out of it, and uh, and it's just so much fun. So thanks for indulging uh, the little extra story, and uh, we'll get to it. All right. So this starts off with a square, and put that in the center of you know whatever wherever you want to place this, a square or something close, and in the middle of wherever you want it or close. <laughs> that that seems to be where I do it. Now, we found that there's two ways to do this, and I'm going to, in the step outs, which will be in the description section, I will have, uh, I have two step outs, because we, we also discovered through playing with this that we have way one, way two, and then I'll also put um, in the for more inspiration section, uh, my blog post where, you know, we announced this uh, tangle. So this is going to be way two, but I'm going to also explain a little bit about way, way one. All right, so once you have your your uh, your box in place, then a couple seeds. I'm going to try mine just a little bit larger since I made my box a little small. And they're going to be on opposite points, like so. Then, so let me see, let me thinking here. All right, I can I can I think I can explain both at the same time. <laughs> We'll see how this goes. All right. So the way I, I was first looking at it was, so what we're going to do is we're going to come from the, the point of the seed. And we're going to draw a curved line coming to the edge of the box. Okay. The subsequent ones, the way I was doing it was to, you know, coming from the same point always and we're coming down and then creating a straight lines in the box. And then so you'll have straight lines and we're going to do it, you know, a number, both directions. So we have this really nice grid pattern. So the way I did it first was that way. And, and well, let's just do, you know, I'm going to do one in the middle. Let's see if I can do this. So I'm, I'm dividing that space. And when I come to the box, I'm going to straighten up and go straight there, straight down to, to make it a straight line. But we also decided that you could, if you wanted to, do the straight line first. So I'm going to finish it with the other straight lines because what I would normally do, what I found more comfortable, is to draw the straight line here, dividing the box, and then subdivide the other two sections so it makes them kind of even. 
and then turning the tile or turning your paper and doing the same thing on the other side. Now this way you end up knowing how, being able to control how big your grid is here. I found the other way not as easy to control, although, uh, and if you decide you want to watch the class replays, those will be posted uh, shortly. So if you're a subscriber to the channel, you'll get alerted when those are up. And if you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you as a subscriber to the channel, and then you get alerted when um, when I put up new videos. Um, so, so the way, um, as you'll see on the class uh, replays, the way my mom was doing it, she was she was doing it this way, just doing the whole thing. But she, like I said, she would stop, pause, and then make a straight line. The way I was doing it on my first step out was I was just auraing essentially, and so I had a I had a very busy grid. They both look neat. And so it's whatever way that you decide you want to work. And I share that because we all work differently and I want to give you the option and not, you know, and so that way nobody feels like, oh, I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it a different way. You have options. It's all good. Okay. So then we get the one side done and then the other side, same idea. Now you can either like this one, I started from the top and went down to the, to the box. You can also start at the box and come up to that point, whichever way works better for you. I kind of do them both ways because what I'm working with is, is my hand curve because what we like to do in Zentangle is to, it's, it's kind of like a consistency thing because this is my natural curve, so I'm gonna work with it. The only trick with this is that you kind of have to go a little bit slow and then especially as you get to that line, just to line it up you know, and make sure that they match, like so. And you know what, if, if something ends up not matching, especially if you're, if you've been watching for a while, you know, there's no such thing as a mistake in Zentangle and there's always a way to course correct. And, and this is essentially the tangle. And then it's playtime and you can have fun by doing, you know, a lot of different things. And actually this one, I'm just, I'm gonna leave this plain, but I'm gonna add a little bit of, of shading. I'm just, I'm gonna throw some shading right here where these all converge. And then I'm gonna show you some samples of some things that you could do and have fun with it. So the, the basic of it, it's, it looks so involved and it's so intricate, but it's really not hard. I think that uh, I was making it harder than it, needed to be when I was doing uh when I was doing it first and just putting you know taking the line and going and you know and I was going I was doing a lot I had a lot of lines going and it was very busy like I said it still looks neat and you'll see that on the step out um but it doesn't have to be that complicated and then all of the fun that you can have with it and so see that just looks neat and you know what I think I'm gonna do while I'm at it let's just put um I'm gonna go on the inside of the grid and put a little bit of graphite and just want to shade and I'm, I'm literally as you can see I'm just almost just tracing over the graphite because I don't want to spread it out too far well <laughs> I've, I've spread it just right into that uh, well I've, I've essentially just colored in that one box I'm just gonna pull it I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit then we'll cover that whole thing Making, keeping it a little bit lighter in the center, um, but lots of things that you can do. All right. So again, this, so this was from our session. So this was from the morning session. This one is actually for the most part done. And uh, so interesting things also, since there's no such thing as a mistake in Zentangle, I, you know, I started off here's, you know, actually look at it. So there's the middle. So this is where I started. And then. I decided, oh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go out to the sides and I was just going to repeat it. And I thought, well, should I put another seed or just do a seed and then a box and then, you know, a seed. And I decided to do, you know, to do a box here. And then, no, I could have gone it two ways. I could have, um, you know, here, here's the, the, you know, the one side with the curved lines. Here's the other side, and I went over the others, and I thought, well, that just that just looks neat, and we call them happy, well, happy accidents. There's no there's no real accidents. It's just we turned it into it's an opportunity, 
and um and it just turned out really neat and then i decided on this I was, oh let's just put a seed and we'll do another one here and then uh we've been calling these uh fancy fescues just because the, it just it just looks fun and um so this is that was the first one. Oh, and then did an aura around the outside and then i decided to decorate because i had a little smudge somewhere um for i was doing these uh little uh gems and uh my course correction for that and i can't even find it now um i think it was over here yeah because well, some of the the pink got out and i'm like oh well let me just put some orbs in here and i could have also filled it in solid or put lines in there it's up to you how you want to decorate um, and this, so this is just what I decided to do on just on the one side and have it kind of curve over. And I like how it looks. Then our second session, I, I wanted to do the same thing, but do it on a dark, uh, on a black tile. And uh, it is not quite finished, but almost there. And actually you can kind of see the lines a little bit, uh, you know, better as they've, they've uh, kind of been traced over. So I'm still kind of messing with this one, but I wanted to do something similar and kind of have, uh, you know, day, night type of thing. So anyway, really fun tangle. So many uh, different ways uh, to have fun with it. And uh, if you're also, if you're subscribed, well, I'll put a link. Um, oh, no. If you want to subscribe to my blog, you go to the website and, and click, you know, follow this blog or uh, follow us, I think is what it says. Um, and then uh, when I release the... Um, the blog post, which I call a recap, then you can see the screenshots from both sessions, see the individual pictures, and see all of the amazing work that we did having fun with this Tangle today, and um, and then you get ideas. That's 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 how I run the Tangle time. It's it's about um, finding ways to have fun with the Tangle and just explore our creativity. It's kind of a kind of a free for all. Uh, the only the only constant is the Tangle. So. Uh, so with that, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, would love to have a thumbs up. If you decide to do this tangle and post it places, please use the hashtag Saura, um, but you just have to you just have to learn how to spell it right um, because it it doesn't sound like it looks. So, <laughs> but if you would put put a hashtag in front of that, so that way we can find it. That would be so much fun. All right, and with that, again, thanks so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and. Um, would love to see you on a tangle time sometime. And with that, I wish you happy tangling.